Imagine a creature so strange, so unique. It defied classification for centuries. A zebra that wasn't quite a zebra. A horse that wasn't quite a horse. Its name echoed its distinctive call, Quahaha. This was the quagga, an animal that vanished completely from Earth. But what if its story didn't end there? But by 1883, this mysterious animal vanished forever. This is the untold story of the quagga, its rise, its fall, and the incredible journey to bring it back from extinction. The quagga wasn't just any zebra. It was a subspecies of the plain zebra, native to the dry grasslands of South Africa. What made it different? Well, look closely. The front half looked like a zebra, with bold brown and white stripes. But the back half looked more like a horse, plain brown with no stripes at all. That's what made it such a mystery for centuries. Early scientists were puzzled. Was it a zebra? A different species? A hybrid? It wasn't until 1984, using preserved skin samples and the power of DNA testing, that scientists confirmed the quagga was, in fact, a subspecies of the plain zebra, now officially named Equus quagga quagga. The quagga lived in the Karoo region and Orange Free State, vast, dry grasslands in southern Africa. Here, it played a crucial role as a grazer, eating tall, tough grasses that other animals avoided. In fact, its grazing helped maintain the health of the entire ecosystem by keeping the grasslands open and balanced. It lived in tight family groups, called harems, led by one dominant male and several females. These herds weren't just social, they were smart. When resting at night, at least one member always stayed awake to keep watch for predators. And there were plenty. Lions, hyenas, cheetahs, crocodiles, all threatened the quagga. But together, they had strength in numbers. They were fast too, up to 70 kilometers an hour, and could travel long distances in search of food and water. For thousands of years, native peoples like the Khoisan hunted the quagga in sustainable ways. They used the meat, hides, and even bones in daily life. The quagga also appeared in ancient rock art and folklore, often portrayed as intelligent spiritual animals. But everything changed with European colonization. Settlers began to view the quagga as competition for farmland. Their land was needed for cattle and sheep. The quagga became a pest, a nuisance, and was hunted not just for food, but for fun. By the 1850s, large herds of quaggas had vanished. In just a few decades, a species once described as plentiful beyond belief became increasingly rare. The last wild quagga is believed to have died in 1878. The last one in captivity, a lonely mare, died at the Artist Zoo in Amsterdam on August 12, 1883. Tragically, nobody realized it was the last of its kind. The term quagga had been used loosely for many zebras, causing confusion even among scientists. By the time people understood, it was already too late. And so, the quagga vanished, not because of natural causes, but because of human carelessness and lack of awareness. But the quagga's story didn't end in 1883. In the 1980s, one man, Reinhold Rao, had an idea. What if we could bring the quagga back? Thanks to the DNA breakthrough that showed the quagga was a subspecies of the plain zebra, Rao believed that some living zebras might still carry quagga genes. Thus began the quagga project, an ambitious effort to selectively breed plain zebras that looked more and more like the quagga. They started with 19 zebras that had fewer stripes. Over several generations, the offspring, called Rao quaggas, began to resemble the extinct animal. By 2016, some zebras had no stripes on their back or legs, and their color matched the museum specimens. Scientists measured stripe patterns, genetic markers, and even compared them to the only photograph ever taken of a living quagga at the London Zoo in the 1860s. So far, the project has produced over 100 Rao quaggas, some of which now roam in protected reserves. Not everyone agrees with the quagga project. Critics ask, are we really bringing the quagga back or just creating a zebra that looks like it? The answer is complex. These new animals may look like quaggas, but they may not behave or function exactly the same. Some genetic or behavioral traits could be lost forever. 
Others worry that focusing on de-extinction might distract from protecting endangered species that are still here today. But supporters argue that the Quagga Project is not just about one species, it's a symbol, a reminder that with knowledge, science, and commitment, we can undo some of the harm we've caused. The Quagga's story is a tale of beauty, tragedy, and redemption. It shows us how easily a species can disappear, even one that was once common. It warns us about the dangers of ignorance, over-exploitation, and waiting too long to act. But it also reminds us of what's possible. With science and passion, we can protect what's left, and maybe, just maybe, restore what was lost. So the next time you see a zebra, take a second look. You might just be glimpsing the shadow of a species that once vanished into the dust. The quagga. Gone, but not forgotten.